Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel of Conscious History, where we will unveil the hidden truths of the past. When we think of Napoleon Bonaparte, the images that often come to mind are those of a brilliant military strategist, the great emperor of France, a man whose ambition knew no boundaries, the man who reshaped the map of Europe and left a significant mark on world history as can be seen in the Napoleonic Code, a testament to his visionary approach to governance and law. But since we are all human, every great leader or remarkable individual has to eat. And with eating, there is always a dietary preference. The saying goes when you've got it all, you can have anything you want. And in the case of Napoleon, one of history's most influential figures, that meant at some point having the world at his feet and the power to command armies. But what did Napoleon desire more than anything else? Exotic, luxurious and nutritionally balanced dishes known to man from the far corners of the earth? Well, not quite. Instead, Napoleon had an extreme love and obsession for a more simple dish. Rotisserie chicken. Yes, you heard that right. In a world where he had the entire culinary realm at his fingertips, Napoleon was head over heels for the simplicity, the juicy proteins and the pure delight of a perfectly roasted chicken. In this video, we are going to look at Napoleon's obsession with roasted chicken and his pretty unusual eating habits. If you like chicken, like and subscribe to the channel and let's start the video. When we dive deeper in Napoleon's love for chicken, it's important to look at a person's background first. During the Napoleonic era, dining habits were notably separated by one's financial status and social class. The French nobility and aristocracy were renowned for their extravagant and lavish dining traditions. Their meals were elaborate affairs, often spawning several hours and consisting of multiple courses. Exotic ingredients, fine wines and delicious desserts were common features of their dining table. In stark contrast, the common people and the lower class had far simpler and more modest dining habits. Their meals were primarily composed of locally sourced, seasonal ingredients. Staples like bread, grains, vegetables and legumes formed the basis of their diets. Meat was a luxury reserved for special occasions due to its cost. Commoners meals were more about sustenance and practicality than about extravagance. Napoleon Bonaparte, the later Emperor of France, had a background as a Corsican of, let's just say, limited means. This meant that when it came to dining, he wasn't exactly born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Next to this, his military background played a big part in seeing food as something practically. While you're on campaign, conquering half of Europe, it's not like you can just ring up room service and ask for the fanciest meal in town. Instead, you get what you can get, and often that meant a simple, healthy meal that would keep you marching. So, when Napoleon did get to power, and because of that his financial status grew, he didn't exactly rush to the best restaurant in town. From his upbringing, he knew that meat was a luxury. Napoleon did not want extravagant dishes. He was content with the good old-fashioned roasted chicken. Besides that, Napoleon absolutely hated Yes, hated dining traditions and unnecessary extravagance while dining. Napoleon's attitude was straightforward. When you have the world to conquer, there's no time for three hour meals and sitting around a table for hours on end. For Napoleon, practicality and efficiency always trumped fancy feasting. When we dive into history, Napoleon was an indifferent eater. Although he was very picky about the best bread that went with the chicken. He often skipped meals, only eating when he was hungry. He had a soldier's impatience for fussy dinner rituals and lacked much of eating decency, always preferring his fingers over a fork or a spoon according to his servants. He did not care about fine wine and was perfectly content with drinking Chambertin wine diluted with water. All this together disappointed especially the friends and family around him who could see his urge to leave the table. At a camp in Boulogne, he asked the marshal at a stable what he thought of the wine that was being served. Since there were almost no people on earth who actually enjoyed wine with water, 
The marshal respectfully reacted, there is better, making the emperor and other guests laugh. Napoleon was a regular and fast when it came to devouring his meals. He ate fast and ill. Apparently he gobbled his breakfast in 8 minutes and dinner in 12. Preferably he ate dinner alone, so it would be done as soon as possible so he could go back to work and not be bothered. When it came to fancy eating, he gladly delegated these boring meals to his marshals who could handle it better. Napoleon did not want to neglect the table where the food was served. Usually, when he was eating, the table was filled with plans of politics and diplomacy so he could straight negotiate about business the moment he was done eating. When he was in campaign, there was a possibility there was no need for a table. He would eat fast, sometimes standing, on horseback or enjoying meals with his soldiers. Of course, within a few minutes. Even though it irritated family members, <coughs> Josephine, when Napoleon ate he had a habit of eating without a napkin, sometimes with his fingers and wiping himself on his uniform which could hardly endure. Napoleon therefore often changed his clothes after his meals. One thing can be said for sure, when it came to food, he loved roasted chicken. If you made it this far in the video and think to yourself, I like roasted chicken too, but that does not mean that I'm obsessed with it. Is this video not a bit exaggerated? Well, let's dive even deeper in Napoleon's life and the fact why we call it an obsession. The emperor derived a part of his military might to capturing chickens, which were constantly roasted on spits at his home in the Tuileries palace, in case he got the munchies. He even took them to the battlefield. When he rode out on Cairo on Christmas Eve, to survey the Suez Isthmus, the only provisions he took were three roasted chickens wrapped in paper. Napoleon's need for chicken forced his household staff to adapt. His private chef once described the following. The moment the appetite was felt, it was necessary that it should be satisfied. And his establishment was so arranged that in all places and at all hours, chicken and coffee might be forthcoming at a word. What about his Grand Armée when he was not at home, I hear you thinking. Unfortunately for them, Napoleon didn't enjoy sharing his seemingly endless chicken supply. In fact, the army's provisions supply system was notoriously unreliable, that soldiers learned by experience that looting was often a more reliable source of food. Looting villages, their horses and other provisions gave usually more results than the army's supply system. And while Napoleon's army sometimes had to loot for their meals, the emperor was in his palace or army tent munching on some delicious roasted chicken. Apparently, the recipe Chicken Marengo came from one of Napoleon's most famous battles where soldiers were hungry and were sent out to find something editable. They came back with chickens onions, garlic, thyme and olive oil, which created the famous signature dish. Now let's assume that Napoleon, a man of practical tastes, enjoyed rotisserie chicken four times a week. Eating four rotisserie chickens a week over a roughly 31 years in his adulthood would give us an estimation of 4572 servings of rotisserie chickens. Now giving the fact that sometimes he ate rotisserie chicken several times in a day, we can estimate that Napoleon devoured over 5000 servings of rotisserie chickens. Because of this, we could playfully crown him, not the colonel, but the emperor of chicken, and add this to his already legendary legacy. Even in Napoleon's final years, remaining seated at the table for a long period of time was horrible for Napoleon. When he was defeated at Waterloo and permanently exiled to St. Helena, where sometimes boredom struck him and there was nothing to do, he still did not want to spend hours dining at the dinner table. At St. Helena, Napoleon had his own waiters who knew the dining habits of the emperor. It is rumored that the English were annoyed by the emperor prisoner, who had the habits of eating chicken and other meals by hand instead of the usual manners. Dinner, etiquette and Napoleon three words that were never destined to be the best of friends. But something that Napoleon did really enjoy after dinner was playing games. Card games like whist, war or other known as battle and 21 also known as blackjack 
what card games the Emperor approached with childlike enthusiasm. Napoleon did have a habit of cheating during card games because of him being competitive and always wanting to win. Another game the Emperor loved playing was chess. He was known as a skilled strategist and saw chess as a way to exercise his mind and practice his strategic thinking outside of his military medals. His personality and way of thinking left him a legacy that will live on eternally in the pages of history. Now the question is to you. What is your favorite meal? And can you understand Napoleon's love and obsession for rotisserie chicken? Leave me your answer below in the comments. And if you like the video, respond with a chicken emoji or leave a like and subscribe to the channel to see more in-depth history videos. We love making content like this and hope to see you next time at Conscious History.